Today's podcast is sponsored by The Morning Navigator, a daily newsletter written by Tony Greer, who is a 30-year veteran trader in the financial markets. I think it's important to be responsible with your personal finances and investments, and it's hard to do that without understanding the markets. Now this is where The Morning Navigator fills a specific need for me. If you're looking for actionable trade ideas or simply to educate yourself about the markets, then The Morning Navigator will help you to do both. It's an interesting, informative, and amusing daily read. Now, a subscription to The Morning Navigator normally costs $60 a month or $650 per year. However, my listeners can go to tgmacro.com, sign up for a free one-week trial, and apply the code ZUBY, Z-U-B-Y, at checkout for a discount of either $10 off the $60 a month subscription or $100 off the $650 annual subscription. As you can infer, the annual subscription is a better deal. Either one is a win when it comes to understanding the global markets and managing your personal investments. So once again, you can sign up today for a free trial at tgmacro.com. tgmacro.com. Go check it out. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world? I would like to welcome you back to the Real Talk with Zuby podcast. Now, on today's episode, we have got on the man, the myth, the legend, the founder of McAfee antivirus software. I'm sure some that's going to ring a bell for a lot of people out there. And um, he is also running for US president in 2020. And this is Mr. John McAfee. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm happy to be on your show. And, and thank you uh, for inviting me. And for, for those of you in the uh, listening audience, um, I was late. Um, I am not generally late. I think it's very rude. <coughs> Excuse me to be late. Uh, I wanted to apologize both to my host and to the audience. Oh, that's all good. What a gentleman. What a gentleman. So John, for people who don't know you or may not have heard about you, give, give them a little, uh, little background about you. A little background. Yeah. Uh, well, in which respect, I mean, you know, the, uh, the off the wall number of times I've been in prison background. <laughs> Well, my maybe, maybe we can. My technological background. Yeah, well, let's my start. political background. I'm, I'm sorry. There is a I lot. There, there is a lot. You've, you've had an interesting life. So, I mean, so everything with you, I mean, you, you started, uh, so you were actually born in the, in the UK. Yes, I was yeah. uh, at the end of World War II. I'm 74, born in 1945, September 18th. Okay. <coughs> in England. Maybe. And. Uh, at the time, a bombed out and fairly desolate uh, victor. And mm. it was a victor, um, along with the other allies. Um, but really a devastating time. Uh, my father was an American soldier. And my mother was a, um, um, a beautiful young British woman. Uh, my father was stationed in England for a while. I was the result. Um, and it was two years before we could go come to America mm-hmm. uh, because at the end of the war, there was economic devastation everywhere. No one had money. No one had passage. You know, my father uh, was shipped back to the States, some er- early dismissed along with everybody else. You know, uh, We don't need uh, millions of, of active soldiers in peacetime. So uh, anyway, it, t- it took two years to organize it. Uh, and I, I went to America, where I grew up and spent the absolute majority of my life. I'm an American citizen, and mm. I love uh, America. Um, you know, I have admittedly lived uh, 15 or more years outside uh, of America mm. in various countries. Nevertheless, I always returned. That was merely for experience. Gotcha. Um, I'm sorry. No, I just said got you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> so I'm I'm American through and through. Anyway, came over to America when I was two to the poorest region of America called the Appalachians. Mm. Uh, look it up, people. Uh, it it uh, it scores well with any poverty-stricken area of this earth. Nothing there. Coal mines. Coke ovens filling the sky with black smoke. And so that's where I, at the age of two, ended up. Uh, and for the next 10 years, I uh, lived 
and I had sucked in the environment there. Now you can imagine what it was like in 1947 when I arrived up until uh, 1957 when I moved on with my parents. Mm. Um, brutal, uneducated people. Um, you know, as an example, here's a story. When we first came over to the States, a little town called Norton, Virginia, the heart of the coal mining part of America. And my mother, British, never been to America, first time at the grocery store. And, uh, you know, they knew my mother uh, was, uh, was English. Mm-hmm. And so, if I, you know, I knew a few words. I mean, I'm kind of two and a half years old by then. I can speak a little, not my name, hello, goodbye, to that. And the ladies are going, oh, my God, he speaks such good American. Um, <laughs> no, th- did not know that in England, they spoke the same wow. fucking language. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So that, um, that's, that's I mean, that's how, that's how, that's how uneducated the yeah. reason was, and poverty, and brutal beyond, beyond imagination. When, when, you, when you say brutal, poverty is a, is a, poverty is a brutal life. See, yeah. people think, I don't know, these people go, you know, you're raised with a golden spoon in your mouth. What the fuck? What, what the world are you talking about, people? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, Power, golden, silver spoon. Are you crazy? <laughs> so, so how did you go from until I go... was until I was twelve years old? Yeah. Um, this is my reality. And how did so you go? From, how did you go from I'm that sorry? to? I said, how did you go from that to um, founding a super successful company in the world of tech? Um, you know, with with McAfee Antivirus. How did that? How did a boy from that sort of background end up in that in that position? What was the what was the story there? That was due entirely to my grandfather in Norton, Virginia. Okay. Um, let me tell you about my grandfather. Please do. Um, do not let me forget the thread of this. The thread is where we were going. How did it go from net to a successful company or more? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Good. It's because of my grandfather. Now, my grandfather, um, to give you his history, when uh, um, my father was 12 and his next younger brother was eight and the next younger brother was just two, my grandfather just up and disappeared. Okay. Uh, disappeared. My father was left with um, uh, supporting uh, his mother, uh, his two younger brothers in, uh, you know, the the uh, the thirties, for heaven's sakes, <laughs> the height of depression. Mm. No grandfather. Ten years later, my grandfather returns, shows up at the door, and my grandmother takes him back without question, without question. Wow. Without anything. Well, okay. Mac, Mac, Mac is what they called him. McAfee. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's what he comes from. Welcome back. They everybody called him Mac. Um, he was missing a finger. That's the only difference uh, between when he left and when he came back, other than 10 years older. And we never told anyone why or how his finger was no longer there. Uh, other than that, there was no mystery to this man. He had stopped drinking. He was, he was a settled down loafer. But my father, who had, <laughs> had to spend 10 years supporting his mother, and, and two younger brothers in a depression uh, was pissed off that uh, my grandmother took him back. Mm. <laughs> so he left home okay. and joined the army. And then America gets into a war, and next thing you know, he's over in England where he meets my mother. So that's that yeah. fucking story. But it, it goes to my grandfather. My grandfather, when I knew him at the age of two, because then he was back, we were living in the apartment below his house. And uh, to me, he was a god himself. He taught me how to shoot. He was, I've never seen a more honest person, although I understand, um, prior to his leaving, <laughs> that he was a serious hellraiser. 
But in any case, my grandfather taught me a lot. One of the things that he did teach me is never believe a word that anyone else tells you about something that you are able to see yourself. Mm, okay. <laughs> Very few have that talent. You understand? Mm. And we get the coronavirus nonsense going on around us now. In any case, so that and other smaller things that you always told me, trust no one, meaning no one, mm. not your wife, not your, you know, your children, if you have them, certainly not your father, and not even me. That's what he said. Wow. You can only trust one person, and that's yourself. Mm. These and other things is why or how. I got from the poorest region in America, if not all of the North American continent, uh, into a position where I could feed myself and buy a car and a television. Um, it's because I followed my grandfather's advice and trusted no one. Not my business associates, not the people I hired. To work for me. And I always thought for myself. <clears throat> if mm -hmm. A thousand people all reasoned something out and said, This is the answer. Okay, well, let me reason it out first myself and then I'll join you. Mm -hmm. And if I come up with a different answer, I don't care if it's like right now, the coronavirus, the entire world's going, Oh my God, it's going. <gasps> What I'm saying is all the bullshit, and you will see in six months' time. I don't okay. give a shit that everybody's throwing stones at me. I'm oh, sorry, my language. I apologize. <laughs> please, please, I apologize. <laughs> I'm doing that's the okay. best I can. No, no, no. <laughs> I know you. I know you're attempting to censor yourself. That's okay. That's okay. I'm sorry. I no. I said that's okay. I know you're. I know you're making an effort to. Uh, to reduce I am. I'm seriously making oh, an effort. Okay. It's difficult it. because I, I'm not sure which words are even <laughs> um, okay. un, unpopular words, right? But, but I'm trying. I really yeah. If I if I speak slower, it will be easier. So let That's me try okay. that. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, give, give me another question because this thread uh, is going nowhere. No, no, <laughs> that's okay. So let let's uh, let's move on forward a little bit. So I mean. You are you are you are known for a, a lot of things, man. Like I don't even know where to, I, I don't even know where to begin. So, I mean, for the past couple of decades, it seems like you've been you've been all over the place. Lots of unknown locations, some known locations. Um, you know, obviously, I don't want you to put yourself in any sort of a you know legal situation or anything like that, but. Can you uh, just sort of give us a, a, a sort of history of the past, I don't know, 10 years? Let me just give some highlights. Yeah, what's I mean, been going on? Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious. I, I see snapshots. I mean, I started, I started McAfee Associates. Yeah. <clears throat> um, took it public. Uh, left it very quickly because once it became successful, we had 5,000 employees. I wasn't enjoying myself. I'm dealing with stockholders and board of directors meetings and personnel issues. I don't even know the names of the people I'm passing in yeah. the hall yeah. and they work for me. Mm. Who wants to be in that position? Not me. I said, I ain't doing it. I'm not doing it. Okay. Um, so I hired a replacement left and just wandered the world. Started up little businesses here and there not to make money. I gave them always to the local people where I was, whichever country I was in. And, and just pleased myself. Mm -hmm. Find out who am I? Listen, I've got enough. Listen, I had more money than God. And no one should ever be allowed to have as much money as me. Nor anyone who has more than what I have had. Because seriously, no, 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 no. I'm serious. When you're in a position where you name an item, mm. name an item. Oh, honey, there's a, there's a yacht here um, uh, for sale. 
in uh, in Miami. And isn't this the kind of the one you wanted to go fishing in? It's only 21 million. Um, just buy it. And you don't give it, you don't care one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. There's no skin off of your back. I mean, there's, listen, the money that you have without doing anything with it other than putting it in investment bankers' hands um, who return your rate, if you're lucky, even more than 5% a year. I mean, so we have, we're, every month, we're getting millions of dollars for doing nothing other than sitting on our butts. Mm. And so no one should have that much money. I'm just saying, you know. So uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very interesting statement to make for someone who's uh, you know, known for being very libertarian. When you said that uh, nobody should be allowed to have that, that's uh, that only because like, uh, okay. only because any anybody. Can we talk about libertarianism? Are you yes, libertarian? Let's do it. Um, not totally. I lean. I have libertarian leanings. Some kind of conservative leaning slash libertarian leaning on most things. Somewhat liberal on other things. It really depends. Now here is the problem with libertarianism, which no one has yet brought up addressed, let alone solved, okay. and it's this. The libertarian philosophy, which is so profoundly beautiful, states that your body and your mind belong to you and no one else. Mm -hmm. That's rule one. Number two, that your obligations to society are only to tell the truth, keep your commitments, and not harm anybody else. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't that a beautiful fight? Isn't that a beautiful? Sorry. Yeah, I'm, beautiful I'm down with that. Philosophy? I'm down with that. Um. So, but here's the problem. And every and everything else, you um, uh, do as you wish. Let's. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I, I agree I, with I, that. I, part, but yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that's why not if you're not harming anybody. Yeah, well, okay. Are they agree with I, anybody else's rights? What's wrong yeah. with that? No, no, I, I agree with it from a from a legal perspective, but not so much from a, a like a societal and individual and moral perspective. If that makes sense, right? I think people uh, need. More, I, think, I think people need more stuff to guide them than to guide them than just uh, than just that aspect. But from a legal perspective, I do. Do they? Agree. Okay, I think let's so. talk about that because that's yeah, go ahead, what go you ahead. just said is a far far more important subject than the thing we're bantering about. Okay, okay. okay. And, and, and that is, um, say it again exactly the way you said it, please. Oh gosh, how exactly did I say it? I said that I think that beyond doing whatever somebody pleases, as long as it doesn't harm or infringe on another person's right, I think that for an individual and a society and for a community to actually have like a you know, to be cohesive and to be moral and decent, I think that people need guidelines that go beyond that. Okay. Yeah. Now, you said it exactly the same. So you actually believe that statement. Wonderful. You and I can have a great conversation because I, I'm sorry, I have to disagree with every word. Oh, interesting. Okay. That, that you said. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> let us look at reality. Um, who makes the guidelines? Who decides what is moral? Um, because these are the frameworks upon which uh, we get the guidelines, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. But so I, I have no problem with guidelines, provided every human can agree on those two things mm -hmm. morality, number one, let's forget everything else. What does that mean, my friend? Sorry, say that. I, I, I missed what you just what said. What does that mean? Morality. What does morality mean? Okay, well, I, I don't yes. have, a, I don't have a, a dictionary definition. So I. No, no. I, listen, yeah. if you had a dictionary, <laughs> I, could, I could care less. <laughs> We're having a conversation between you and I. What does it mean to you? Please. Okay, so to me, morality means the <laughs> principles, guidelines, behaviors, actions that are used to dictate 
how one lives their life and what they perceive generally as good or bad, right or wrong, um, good or evil, anything okay. like that. Right, good. Everything, yeah. everything you said, I agree with. Sure. Everything you said. Okay. Now, now you, you, I think, are trying to say that those things come from outside yourself. To me personally, yes. I'm, I'm a religious person, so for me, the clear answer is yes. However, I recognize that and everyone me has... Too. In fact, okay. I, can, I can tell you this. Anybody at the age of 74, as I am, is far more religious, my friend. Interesting. Than you, at <laughs> your young age. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I tell you, truthfully, there is only one religious book and only one path to God or whatever you wish to call this entity, thing, concept, beyond which you are able to touch, see, smell, and taste. That, that book is in you. And there can be no other book for you, and that book will be different for every single person in every single different situation. And that the idea that there is, in fact, some universal right and universal wrong, I challenge that person to wander this world for 15 years and see every different culture, every different hardship, every different reality. Mm -hmm. And you tell me, sir, what is right and wrong? And I will tell you the fallacy in your statement. Okay, so you, you think it's subjective on everything or just on some things? Everything. Really? Everything. You can't have half measures avail you. Nothing in life, people. Nothing. And if something applies to one thing and not to another, mm -hmm. then that has no value. Mathematics, for example, is, is an example of something that applies to every aspect of reality. It has been my training. Mm -hmm. My love, why I was my love, it came easy to me. Something wrong with my brain. <laughs> I never had to study. Yeah. Right? yeah well, um, got natural it was through school, graduate school. I never had to study. Yeah. I got straight A's. Why? I was something different. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just me. However, I do know this that mathematics applies to every aspect of reality. And I also tell you that the book inside you applies to every aspect of reality mm -hmm. for you because you are a unique living entity on a planet a blue planet circling an unremarkable star at the edge of an unremarkable galaxy in a universe of trillions of galaxies <laughs> You can have that. no meaning whatsoever. You can have no possible relevance in this universe. And once you realize that, ooh, I am nothing. I mean, all this about me, because this is what most people are, my friend. They divide the world into two things, me and not me. Mm -hmm. Mine and not mine. And this is the universe. Um, and everybody believes that this thing called me is the most important. How can you prove it? <clears throat> Look at people's actions. And you give me a single one that does not have a tinge of self-serving to it. Unless it's an autonomic response, like yeah. a child drowning in a river. We don't mm -hmm. think. We jump in. Mm -hmm. Full of out. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I take this on stage. Or I did. No, no, <laughs> no. I'm just. Um, I'm, I'm listening with intrigue. It's not a. I, I hear a lot of perspectives on a lot of things, and I don't think this is a, a perspective I, I've kind of quite heard to that degree before. So I'm, mulling it over in my head and just listening intently. Yeah. My perspective does not come from either books or other people's ideas. Mm -hmm. It comes from my own 74 years of experience 
outside the box of expectations, morality, and right and wrong. Else I could so, never have understood anything about who I am and mm -hmm. what my relationship to the world is. So what do you deem right or wrong then in your, in your own <laughs> worldview? Because, I mean, I, I don't believe I that deem there's... I the concept any... of right and wrong uh -huh. as being the prime cause of the decline of both human civilization and human individuality. Oh, okay. That's quite a statement. What do you mean by that? You don't see it? What's no, right not at all. I, I think the opposite. All right, well, let's talk about it then. Yeah. I th I, I, uh, by I the way, what is your religion? Me. May I ask? I don't mean to be I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Okay, Protestant. may I be a Muslim then for a while? If you'd like to, sure. All right. <laughs> Let me tell you what right and wrong is. <clears throat> it is wrong not to see the truth that Allah is Supreme God. And the Mohammed is his prophet, which is why you Christians are wrong and need to be eradicated. Now, my friends, you have your <laughs> I told you my right and wrong. Is uh -huh. that your right and wrong? No, it is not. So yeah. what does it mean? Okay, so sh but surely there are certain Things. I mean, even if you're talking about... Name one. Just one. Murder. Murder? What does that mean? One person killing another. Is that what you're saying? One person killing another. Yes, outside. Don't give me goddamn... Con I'm sorry. Well, well to, I'm saying technically for, for, for it to be murder. Don't give conditions, please. Okay, okay well, a murder problem. has to be unlawful. But yeah, so, so kill, yeah, killing... Killing another human. Killing an innocent person. Yes. No. Yes. Innocent. Yes. Can you describe that? Innocent, what does that mean? Innocent means not, not guilty of a crime and someone who's not trying to harm you in this case. I mean, if we're, I think we need to be slightly nuanced. Otherwise, you know. Right. Yeah. Not, yeah. The people in the Enola Gay, which was the airplane that dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, mm -hmm. uh, killing hundreds of thousands instantly. Yes. Um, those people down below were trying to harm those people. Yeah, yeah I agreed. And those people down below were pretty much innocent of anything toward these two guys. Correct. Now, tell me what right and wrong is. Is it right for them to say yes, I'll drop the bomb? Or is it wrong um, for them to drop the bomb? If it's wrong, then the problem remains, my friend, that every single structure of military existence evaporates if you allow people like the uh, the bomber to um no i don't think i want to push the button mm -hmm. you understand there is no right or wrong here there are just circumstances beyond the control of everyone which is your entire life your entire life right or wrong which it would actually exist if you had any control over anything but you do not okay. well, we're, we're have... going we're going we're going even deeper now okay you want to go seriously deep? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No, let's you do don't. It. No, no, let's. No, you don't want to do that. <laughs> I, was, do I, wasn't, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for this, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Are you? Right. Let's play the following game. So, I'm going to ask you a question, and you can ask me a question. Okay, go ahead. My question. Holy shit! We're over time. We're over time. We only have. We have a couple more minutes. A couple more minutes? Sorry. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so now, but I think this is a good thing. We should. My question is simply, who are you? I am Zuby. You are a sound? That's what I just heard. You're a sound? I know. I'm a human. A name? I'm a human being. You said you're a human. Yes. My name is Zuby. <laughs> people, people, people know me. <laughs> And that's supposed to tell me who you are. Oh, and that's yeah. supposed to tell you who you are? I don't think so, my friend. Please no. get real with me here and now. You said you wanted to go deep. Mm -hmm. We're starting deep, okay. my friend. Okay. You must be honest with me. Who are you? Who am I? Okay. Yes. Okay. If we're going like that, define the question. What would you like to know? 
how do I, how do I, what core things do I define myself by? What do I believe? What do I do? Like what? There's a, there's a lot of questions there. Are you, for example, a thought? Oh, okay. Imagination in your own mind. Uh, that's a part. I'm a, I, I seem to be, uh, you know. Here, here's the issue. The reason I'm asking is because this is the great question of all philosophers of all ages, including the great Greeks with um, um, the, the grand question. What is the answer to life? Know thyself. Meaning you know who you are and you are not a name. I promise you, you are not a species. You are not a black man or a white man. You have nothing to do with those things. These are just merely garbs that you choose to wear or not. Um, I'm not sure I chose all of them, but yeah. You need to, you need to look into you to find out who you are before you start saying, this is right for everybody. Murder is absolutely wrong. Oh, well, these poor, poor guys in the airplane got to push a button. They know they're going to be murdering. Poor as many people. Mm-hmm. I would they're say that's wrong. Hard place. There's no right or wrong. That is not a right or wrong situation. It is simply the situation. What's right or wrong is in okay. the hearts. I, of I understand. The pilot and co-pilot. Yeah. I get Nobody what you mean. Is. Okay, but in in a in a less in a less extreme exceptional example, um, you know, would you would you still would you still hold on to that perspective? I think taking dropping a bomb on Hiroshima. Yes. Is, okay. Okay. I would hold on to it if you took it all the way down to the colony of ants, because if it's true, it's true for everything. There is no truth that is partial. Oh, this is absolutely true, but oh, only under only between. Nine and ten on Thursdays. No. Mm-hmm. If it's true, it's true. I do not care what the circumstances are. There is no right. Nor is there wrong. And if there is a wrong, my friend, that wrong would be the concept that there is right and wrong. Would that not be an extremely dangerous philosophy in a lot of people's hands in reality, if that was how they thought? Well, what if I told you that um, <laughs> 200 million Buddhists think exactly that? That is their utter, absolute belief. Is it? That I, don't know, I don't know a lot can. about Buddhism, to be honest. Well, you might want to look into it if you are a religious man, because that is a religion. So I'm aware it is. As far as I know, Buddhists, you know, are are, gen- are generally very decent people. So I'm, I, I somewhat assume think, that they I have think the good most decent on world. the planet. Okay. <laughs> the most decent on the planet. Yet they absolutely deny the existence of right and wrong. Okay, that's interesting. I, and I'm, they I'm cause not, that the same thing I do, which is the cause of all suffering, is the belief that there is right and wrong. Okay, so why is that Buddhist, the most general of all people? Pardon? Why, why is that the cause? Why would that be the greatest cause of, of suffering? Can you explain that? Because I don't, I don't follow that thread. Because if there's right and wrong, you can believe that you're right by mm-hmm. acting in a certain way. Yes. And if you're right, those who do not act like you are wrong. And you will get angry. And if you have power, you will either enslave, kill, or somehow force them to your way of living. Please see this. This is the fundamental purpose of politics, for heaven's sake. <laughs> sure. The but right it, and wrong uh-huh. is what's killing us people. Yeah, there is no if, such thing. But if killing people isn't even wrong, then why would that even be a bad thing? Why, why would suffering even be a bad thing? Why would killing people be a bad thing based on that very same logic? Uh, killing is one thing. We're talking about suffering. Is okay, why is, why is, suffer- why is, is it suffering? not suffering when, when the world is in chaos because of the conflict between one group and another? Yeah, I don't, I don't I like suffering. I just gave you one between yeah, sure. the Muslims and the Christians. Yeah, You're but right, if- and they say they're right. <laughs> yes, but Please if- say the truth here. But, but it's if- madness. 
<laughs> but if nobody it's believes madness. in if nobody believes in right or wrong and choose to harm, maim, kill each other based on the fact that none of that stuff is even considered wrong to them. Because it has nothing to do with rules. It has to do with your heart, people. You have lost your heart. I'm sorry for yelling, but that is the truth. You've lost your heart. You're I've lost my heart. Here. Okay. No, you obviously <laughs> have, because there's no right or wrong in here. There's no right or wrong. There's simply action or not action. You have disconnected your heart from your head, my friend. Okay. And you believe there is such a thing that the head says, well, I don't care what the heart thinks. Stop the head. No, and my heart, my, 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 my heart, is. my heart. My heart and my head are pretty, pretty on the same page in this regard. Everybody's are if you will just listen to the heart and stop overriding it. Because your heart tells you what's right and what's wrong. And it's never the same for any situation that looks the same. The heart knows it is a sensitive instrument. Stop this mental crap. Excuse me. This mental nonsense. People. <laughs> As a, I, I your mean, if, hearts, your heart is your love. Okay. It is what connects you to the world, to other people. And the head is the thing that creates religion, it creates right, it creates wrong. So should we not have laws? And doing so, you have destroyed your heart. I'm sorry. So so should we have laws? So should we not have, <laughs> have laws? How do we form I'm a cohesive sorry. how do we co form a cohesive society? Like how do we not have laws? Or? Well, libertarians say you don't need laws. Well, libertarians still believe in certain the most basic of laws, which are based on the most basic moralities. But if those basic the laws, laws simply don't basic, lie, well, don't, thought, you know, non don't steal, principle. keep yeah. your word, and yes. do what you want. Yes. Don't harm don't, another. Yeah, yeah. So I where mean, does the law are, come into that? There's no laws in libertarianism, sir. Those are laws of libertarianism. Every libertarian would. You would, tell me one. That. Show me a law, please. In the uh, libertarian philosophy, what law could possibly exist? Don't murder people. Don't rape people. Don't steal people's property. No, that's not. No, that is not the libertarian philosophy. Okay. No, sir. That was not you a are principle. lying about uh, the third largest party in America that okay. does not believe in a single law other yep. than don't lie, don't steal. Okay. Keep your word. Okay. And don't harm. Didn't I just say that? Right. Pardon? Didn't I just say that? I said don't rape, don't kill, and don't steal people's stuff. But that's a law. There are no laws. There's no police going to come and get you. This well, is a are. community thing, people. There's nobody. If. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm you don't need I'm laws. The, you can't say, oh, raping. No. It's a community thing. It's solved between the neighbor, between the person who feels offended and the other. And if he can't be, get the next neighbor involved. Nobody needs a law anymore. You all need heart. That's what the Libertarian Party is. The heart people is freedom. But in the country of liberation, in a country of three hundred, I'm sorry, of 330 million people, though, I mean, I can I think I can understand I can empathize with what you're saying. But in terms of reality and being pragmatic, I mean, how is it any country of hundreds of millions of people going to work on that sort of basis? I can see a small commune or something like that working or, you know, an extended family working on that basis. You don't need laws within your own family or perhaps in a very small community. But as the number of humans rises, the reality is that there needs to be some kind of law or system. Or if, if that's not the case, I've never seen any place where that works. Then you haven't studied anything about American history. Because in the West, west of the Mississippi River, there were no laws other than what the towns created. There was no federal government, even though it was a t an American territory. Mm -hmm. And people go, well, yeah, but that was the most violent period of, of American history. No, not true. Not true. It's the least violent. Yeah, it's portrayed in, in movies and, and documentaries as an extraordinarily violent period. Why? Because they focus on and sensationalize two or three strange and weird events. 
Mm-hmm. But they put yourself in the place to the average cowboy. You pull into town. You'd love to get to the saloon to get a drink and then buy a woman. And um, you bump into somebody coming out of the saloon. Now, you know that every single man in the world is armed mm-hmm. and well-trained with a pistol. Mm-hmm. Um, half of the women are armed. Um, do you go, you bumped into me? No. Both people take their hats off and apologize. Why? The guy coming out of the bar, he knows whoever's coming in is armed, right? Mm-hmm. And whoever's coming in is probably less drunk than him. So he's at a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. The guy coming into the balloon, so he doesn't know. I mean, I know nothing about this guy. He may be the best gunfighter. No, they both tip their hats. They both apologize. In all the Wild West photos of a woman is present, the man's hats are off. Mm-hmm. Politeness. Because the woman whose hats you're not taking off might be. Uh, the girlfriend of the fastest drawing the West. No, you take your hat off, you offend no one. Mm-hmm. Oh, it worked without law, people. What was the population in that area, though? 20 million. 20 million in that region? West of Mississippi, yeah, in 1975. Okay. 20 million. okay. Interesting. Interesting. Is, are there any examples of this in the modern day where this kind of works? The closest I can think is... No, that, yeah. because we've all been brainwashed by capitalism and communism and socialism and other isms, mm-hmm. um, including religiousism. And so we can't think for ourselves anymore. But no, it, listen, there were... You could, you could go 500 miles in all directions. In parts of America, like if you started in the center of Colorado, uh, before you found any area that had a law. Mm. And when you did have the law, they were not serious laws. They were like, please, don't spit on the floor of the saloon. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and if you did, um, the law was not metered, or the punishment was not metered out by the sheriff. No. The patrons in the bar beat the man half to death. Mm-hmm. That was the warning. This is the law. That's what law should be. <laughs> Listen, don't please don't spit on our floor. That's all we're asking. Okay. Right? And so you spit on the floor. All right, enough is enough. Throw the guy out. He may not beat him half to death, but he's going to know <laughs> next time he comes in, he better not spit on the floor. Yeah. That's what law should be, my friend. Not some written code somewhere that applies universally. It's not possible. No, the actual conditions. Maybe the guy came in, stumbled over a chair. I don't know. Or he had tuberculosis. I don't know. It was coughing and spitting. And instead of throwing him out, people were going, help this man. I don't know. You don't know until it happens. There are no rights and wrongs. I'm saying it again. And I'm afraid I'm asleep. Yeah, I know. Way over time. <laughs> I know, man. Thank you. It's, it's, been, it's been interesting. It's been very fascinating speaking to you, John. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast. And um, hey, you're very welcome. Awesome, man. Thank and, you, uh, sir. Real quick, where can people find you online if they want to learn more about you? Official McAfee on Twitter. That's my only place. That's my only home. Awesome. Official McAfee on Twitter. Right. Go follow him. Thank you.